Hello everybody and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. And I'm joined today by my friend, Ann Burke, author of Antarja. And Ann, we are gonna talk all about Antarja today, which yep. is great because you are definitely the expert and I've only piddled with it here and there. And so I, you know, you guys can trust me. I'm gonna bring you the best of the best so that you get all the best details you can get to make you the best knitters and crocheters out there, right? So without further ado, I'm gonna leave it to you, Anne. What's up? Great. Well, a lot of people wanna know what intarsia is. You just heard that it's horrible and hard, and nobody wants to do it, but nobody really knows what it is. Most people think of color work as stranded knitting where you're using two uh, pieces of yarn, two colors at the same time. But what intarsia allows you to do is put pictures on your knitting in a single layer fabric, which makes it less warm, uh, you use less yarn, and you can be more specific about what happens with your color. Let's look down here, and this is with your new yarn. This is so pretty. Chic Sheep, which is really, really delightful to work with. I just loved it. Say that again. It's really, really delightful <laughs> to work with. For me, it's a desert island yarn. I could, I could work with this for the rest of my life, yeah. So um, this is actually knit flat. Now it's a bag, but if you look on the inside, it is seamed. And this was traditionally how we did in Tarja. Um, you would knit a flat piece, and then here I, I knit another piece uh, for the sides, and I seamed them together. And when you use a mattress stitch seam, as I'm sure you've taught your yes. students before, it really is very beautiful and does not look as though it's seamed. So traditionally, oh, knitters haven't really cared whether it was flat or not because they didn't mind doing seams. And especially with Argyle, it's very invisible. Modern knitters, however, you know, have a problem with that. So in another video, I'll teach you how to do it in the round. But today, we're just gonna concentrate on intarsia. And what makes it antarsia is that I try to make things easier. Um, I've sort of hacked a few things to make it easier for knitters. So I'm gonna show you a couple of those things that will even help you with flat intarsia, which is actually pretty easy all on its own. Sweet, all right, so how do we get started? What do we need to get started? What do you recommend? Well, what you need, I really like um, when, when you're starting flat intarsia, or even myself, um, I like to use straight needles. Okay. And the reason for that is that when it gets off the needle onto the cord, the yarn supplies will play in the center and make trouble. Okay. And then you can get tangles. Okay. So to minimize that, I like to use a, a straight needle so that they all hang straight. Now, if you have a circular needle with a long shaft, mm -hmm. it's the same thing, but try to keep it off the cables at least until you're really comfortable with this. Okay. Another thing that uh, makes it a lot easier is to keep the yarn supplies really close to the needle. Now that's why people used bobbins, because with a bobbin you'll unwind it and then wind it up again so it's always close to the needle. The problem with that is that you're spending a lot of time unwinding and winding and bobbins are heavy and so they tend to, uh, they, they tend to, you know, make things. Extra weight. Yeah, it's and, extra and weight and, and they, they twirl and they play and that's when you get tangles. Okay. So my preferred method of containing the yarn are these self-contained little um, yarn butterflies that I wind. And I think we're gonna show them how to do I that love it. too. Yeah. In I'll a, put a video. link right there and that little eye right there you can click and you'll find the yarn butterfly and you'll Anne shows you exactly how to make one. It's fascinating. So what I have here is I've just got a, a few stitches here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start an argyle diamond. Does it matter how many stitches you cast on or anything? No. For, so you can use any number of stitches, whatever's required for the design. Absolutely. Okay, that Absolutely. Makes sense. What I'm doing is I would like to be able to get a few rows into it okay. so to show you. So I've just got a very small number of stitches. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna do, I don't know if you remember, but on the Argyle Diamond, it started with two on the bottom. And so I have five stitches here for my body, and I'm gonna have the center two to start that diamond. Okay, Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna show you how to add the yarn. Now, what I did is I really don't like to use skeins at all when I'm knitting the project because a skein is really an anchor, yes. and nothing is going to tangle 
like that. Yeah. So what I did is I went ahead and wound from the ball onto a little yarn butterfly, and that's gonna be my first yarn supply. Okay. So I'm going to knit five stitches. So yarn supply, for those of you who might not be following along very well, that is, that's your change of color. That's the length of yarn you will be using as you're working this color work with the intarsia. That's what she's talking about when she says yarn supply. Yep. So now I'm going to use a different color. This is gonna be my diamond color. So now I've got one end here that's not moving. That's the um, knotted end. So this is the end that I'm going to attach to the needle. I leave a five inch end approximately. I don't measure it. It's about the size width of your hand because this is the amount of yarn that I have scientifically and very carefully with great <laughs> research determined is going to have enough weight to keep it from coming off the needle but not be so long I'll knit with it by mistake. You know it's funny because I was at a retreat or a, a knitting festival with you and you guys know I always say leave four to six inches and my friend said no no I was just in Anne's class she said leave five and I was like really really <laughs> <laughs> so I will start leaving five inches yeah, so awesome yeah. <laughs> okay so what I do is I just make a little loop with my yarn I don't put a knot or anything I put my needle through the stitch take the loop around the end and just pull it through now that is my first stitch okay now in order to anchor the yarn, I'm going to take the yarn I was using and I'm gonna place it over that first stitch. This is just when you're adding the yarn. And that links it so that when I knit my second stitch, the first color is secure, okay? So you put it over the yarn, not under it? Yes, okay. I take the, we call this the old yarn and this color is the new yarn. If you just remember old over new, you'll never go wrong. You take your old yarn over the new yarn. Okay. We don't do the twist in Antarja. We do the do si do, <laughs> okay? Cute. We're just linking the yarn nice and loosely. And I'll talk a little bit more about links later because links are really important. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this again. Mm -hmm. I need another yarn supply because we're gonna have another piece, a separate piece of this light blue color and that's gonna give us that single layer fabric. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I've got my five inches. I'm gonna make a little loop and I'm gonna put it over the end, pull it through. And now I'm gonna take, this is now the old yarn already. How quickly they grow up. <laughs> so I'm gonna take that old yarn over the new yarn and I'm just going to knit that next stitch. So I wanna point out here, one thing that makes Intarja different than uh, stranded is that stranded knitting, you would have used your old mint color to carry on, correct? That's correct. All right. That's Whereas correct. Whereas with Intarja, you have an entire new yarn supply. Even though it's the same color, it's an entire new yarn supply. That's correct. Okay. Now, in Intarja, I am pretty relaxed because I like to break rules. If it's only one stitch, I'm always going to strand behind it. Now, in true Intarja, that's not true. You would have, you know, anytime like on my Argyle uh, bag, I would have two pieces of red, one on each side of that white stitch, but in Antarsia, we don't do that. <laughs> in Antarsia, if you want to, you can also strand behind two stitches, and that's okay, but as soon as you go over two stitches, you really need to separate and have two different main colors, okay. or else it's gonna start to affect your tension. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so now let's go to row two. Now in row two, I'm going to purl. I'm now on the wrong side. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make the same kind of diamond that was on my sample. And here I'm going up two rows before I make my diamond. And this makes it a longer kind of diamond than if I do it every row. So I'm gonna do that here. So the purl rows are really easy because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purl the same color stitches as before. I love the way you knit and purl, it's so fascinating. <laughs> It actually is a little more awkward right now because it's hard to do on camera, but. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I should, I went too fast. So let me show you here. See, that's the problem. This is so quick. It's hard <laughs> for me to remember, you guys don't know. All right, so here I am. I've just finished my blue, my mint blue, my lovely mint. Mint. Okay, so now I'm taking this yarn over the pink yarn, right? And it's almost so easy, you don't even know you're doing it. Okay, so then I'm just going to purl this next stitch. Awesome. And then I'm gonna purl the next one, pink. So now 
old over the new and I'm just making sure and you have to make sure you grab the right one so if you look you could see that this is attached to this stitch if I tug it a little bit Perfect. it tightens so then I know I'm not knitting with an end or anything else and then I'm just going to go ahead and purl to the end of the row and then Jeff, what you did right there okay. is you needed more yarn. I'm pulling more yarn out of my yarn butterfly. Beautiful. Yeah. Now if you're a yanker and you really yank that butterfly, then it's going to get too long and start to play with the other ones. But if that happens, don't worry about it. You can just unwind that yarn butterfly anytime and rewind it and take it back up to the next to the needle. Nobody wants to be a yanker. Nobody. Don't be a yanker. Yeah, don't be a yanker. <laughs> Being a Yankee's okay. Uh, go socks. <laughs> go socks. <laughs> All okay. right. So now I've got. Uh, this looks pretty good. I like those colors it looks together, beautiful. don't you? I love them. <laughs> Part of the fun with intarsia is playing with color. This would look completely different, like if it was white and red, or you know, if you had gray and a darker gray. Gray and red. <laughs> it's really interesting how different it'll look. So that's that's what keeps me doing this. Is just I never see enough combinations. Okay, so now I'm going to increase the size of my diamond. So now I'm only going to knit four stitches with the mint. I'm going to take it over my, what color is this? Um, uh, sangria. Sangria. Okay, so I'm going to take the mint over the sangria, and that sounds like a good combination right? to me. Right, mint and sangria. Maybe after, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, hello. We just made our dinner uh, plans. Yeah, we just made our plans. <laughs> okay, so I take the mint over the sangria, and now I'm going to knit the stitch with this. Now, I want you to notice I'm keeping things really loose, okay? Don't tighten. It's not going anywhere. Everybody's way too worried about their stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead, and now I'm knitting four. Okay. Now, as you can see, this stitch is not on the needle anymore. So when I go in, I take that sangria over the mint. If I pull this too much, if I'm worried about the, something, and I pull really hard, oh, yeah. what happens is my stitch disappears. Yes. Okay? So we don't want to have that happen. It's not a big deal. I don't even have to really do anything. But what I do is, before I do that, see how I just pulled it? So when I put my, let me do that again. So when I put the needle in and I put the needle out, I just make sure to pull it a little bit so that it's loose. And then when I go in to do the next stitch, I take the sangria over the mint this time, and I try not to pull this very tightly. I can give myself more yarn if I want and just hold it because I want to just gently take it around the needle like that. Now it might seem too loose to you now, but it's really hard to make it too loose, trust me. So what happens on that second one, see how it tightened? And now it looks pretty good, okay? So I'm gonna come along here. I'm gonna do another row, and then I'm gonna show you how good it looks and how important the links are, because now you're gonna start seeing links form in the back. So let me talk a little bit while I purl about links and why they're important. Please do. The links are what make our fabric flexible. Okay. Your knitting, your fabric must be flexible. If you do not have enough yarn in your link, you can't make more, okay? What's going to happen is that link is going to grab yarn from the stitches beside it, and then that's going to affect your tension. It's not going to look very good. So if you see somebody's intarsia where on one row the stitch is really big and on the next one it's really tiny, that's what's happening is on those, those off rows where those stitches are sort of weak and vulnerable, they're pulling too hard. So that's what you want to avoid, and you can do that by making those nice loose links. I'm going to go ahead and increase this diamond one more time. This makes sense to me because my husband recently bought some dress socks mm -hmm. and he couldn't get them over his heel and he was like, I don't understand. I have some of these dress socks and they were argyle. He's like, they fit fine. They have all this color work, but then these ones over here, they don't fit. And the problem was, instead of doing argyle with links or anything, they stranded. Oh, and so there's Lord. No, there was no give. Yeah. And so I had to, at the store, uh, undo the pack of socks and I'm showing him the inside and I'm like right. look watch this I'm like see how you have stretch here and he said yeah and then I grabbed the one that was stranded across the colors yeah. and I said you see how you have no stretch he goes oh that's so fascinating I'm like you just took a class with Marley Bird <laughs> and he was like awesome I'll pay you later <laughs> oh, okay. oh well not like that well you know <laughs> uh, yeah I know but, I mean it is it's one of those things that even 
it, yes, in our hand knitting, but when machine knit um, items yes. are that way too, that explains why your dress socks might not be fitting is because of either your links are tight or your stranded is tight or um, anything like that. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so let's take a look. I just finished here, and as you can see, this is starting to form a diamond shape. Now, when you're doing this, if it feels too easy, you're doing it right. Okay. That's what I hear from a lot of people is like, this is it, this is it, this is what's supposed to be so hard, and that's the response I want to get. So on the right side, it looks pretty good. Now, you will see that the stitches are cutting in, and that's because that's what knit stitches do. That's what they do. It's supposed to look like that. It's okay. On the, but it looks pretty good, uh, you know, actually. I want to point out that that was the stitch you did kind of loosely. And yeah. you can't tell at all. No. Like, it fits, everything just worked right into place. Yeah, it really does. Um, it's like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, call. Well, in class, I'm, I'm always, you know, loose, loose. Because you really, if you don't, it's going to tighten up. Um, on the other side, we've got links. Oh, those are so pretty. Mm -hmm. They are. And this is what you want. You want these nice... Uh, links, you know, they're they're locking, and kind of like this. Mm-hmm. And and these definitely are not too loose. <laughs> no, those look great. <laughs> but they, but that's pretty good. But you have to start out loose in order for them to look like this. And uh, the the links are um, what we're going to hide our ends in and make the ends really easy to go away. So they're important for that too. But this is what allows the fabric to move and breathe. Okay. See, this is just as stretchy as any stockinette fabric. And actually, I can knit this as fast as stockinette fabric That's because amazing. you're just throwing that yarn over as soon as you get to a minute color. That's all there is to it. So intarsia basically is using multiple colors but not stranding them behind each other, linking them together as you're switching from one color to the next one, yarn source. Is that what you called it? Yarn supplies. Yarn I supply. Call them. Um, and then just, you know, following, do you follow a chart, a graph? Yes. Okay. You can. Um, it, it depends, and a lot of ease of intarsia is choosing your chart wisely. Okay. I recommend when you're looking at intar intarsia charts or if you're designing one yourself, you want to keep the colors really close to each other like this because that makes it really easy. If you start to get two or three stitches over, then you have to start weaving in the yarn behind. It gets a little more complicated. Um, I also like big blocks of color. That makes it really easy. Mm -hmm. I tend to do things like a lot of spirals. <laughs> okay. So I'm just moving. I'm just moving the the stitches over. Um, so you know, big blocks of color. Um, you know, I I'm very lazy actually. So I like to do things the easiest way. And as long as you keep your colors close to each other, this is a snap. So I think one of the questions somebody might have is, how mm -hmm. do you finish off something like this? Is it just do you bind off as regular? How how do you get back to wait? Maybe just what one color? Let oh okay. Well, which one do you want to do? Whichever one you want to do. Okay, so if you're going to uh, go all one color, let's say this was going to be a diamond, no big deal. I would just knit across there with either whatever I wanted it to be, uh, the mint, an entirely new color. If I wanted to do uh, another stack, with, you can just do whatever you want. There's, And then you cut these off, leaving a... Five inch tail. That's right. Five inches. That's right, girl. Five inches. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, um, if I was going to bind this off, I would uh, just bind off regularly okay. um, with the different colors. So, oh, okay. mm -hmm. so I'm going to bind it off here. Oh, I forgot to bind it off. That would help. <laughs> there you go. So I take the normal? old stitch okay. over the new stitch. Yep. And I also tend to sort of leave my bind offs maybe a little loose. Now, this one I'm going to... Okay. See, see how I took the yep. old yarn over the new yarn again? Uh -huh. I'm still doing that. And then I'm going to bind this off. So now that yarn source is done. Yes. Okay. And they're really easy to cut off because they're all solid. Yeah. Oh, see, this is cool. Okay, now I'm going to take that old yarn over the new yarn. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, and then I'm, I'm just going to cut them all off with my ends. Well, actually, yeah. 
It's nice to see you get a little bit tangled too. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> tangles don't bother me. Yeah. I, I don't mind when the yarn plays with the, each other because let's face it, I like playing with yarn. <laughs> Why should my yarn be any right. different, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fantastic. to me, it's only natural. There you go. Then awesome. I, what I like to do with my old yarn butterflies is I will put them in like a, a clear vase and I save them and they're, they're really pretty as you keep going. And they're a great source for waste yarn or if you need some of this color, you know right where to go. So Very cool. Yeah. So my last question I'm going to mm -hmm. have, and this is usually the frustration people have with Intarja, is as I flip this around, I have all of these ends. You want to get rid of them? Do you have a secret? I do. All right. So I'm going to have you hold that thought. And I'm going to say to you guys, this is fantastic. You have just gotten your first introduction to Intarja and linking different colors. But don't let the ends deter you because Anne has a super great secret for how to get your ends buried away. So if you want to check out that video, go ahead and click on that little I button right there. Or wait till after this video for the direct link. Or I'll also put it down there in the video description box below. And while you're down there, what should they do, Anne? They should smash that like button. Oh, please. Smash, smash the that like, like button. button. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. And this is so awesome. All right, now let's weave in some ends. Okay. Now that you can do Intarja, you can make the Chic Sheep Dream Blanket. Say that three times fast. Or if you want to learn more about Intarja, get Anne's book, Antarja Knits. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.